Welcome to Straight Talk with Daphne Fini. I am so excited to give you another exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with the one and only Terrence D. Howard. <laughs> I didn't say the whole middle name. I like it though. You like, I like it? it? I like Deshaun. Deshaun, I like yeah, Deshaun too. Mama gave me Deshaun. She did. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Cause you're special. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. I was on a little bus. Not the short one. Though. I was on a short bus. Not the short little. Yeah, bus. when I was in the. Uh, Second grade, um, because I was saying, wow, that's the prettiest color blue I've ever heard. And um, the teacher was like, you can't, you know, colors don't have something. I was like, yes, they do. It's like, no, you, no, they don't. And they ended up sending me to a remedial school mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for about a year. Yeah. And I was just like, nah. The people that were there were so incredible, the kids, because they saw things differently. Right, yeah. You know, but what it turned out is I had, um, everyone's born with synesthesia. Mm -hmm. And that's just the ability to have more than one, um, one stimuli can affect multiple um, receptors. Right. And so sound or color will, color will have a sound or shapes will have a taste, mm -hmm. all of those things. And every child is born with it. Right. The problem is, you know, the first thing a kid wants to do, he wants to put things in his, in his mouth because he has um, an idea or an expectation of what that's supposed to taste like. And that informs him. Mm -hmm. But when we don't allow them to put things in their mouth and we don't talk to them about the relationship between light and color or sound and tone and matter and shape, mm -hmm. you know, it dies as a result of atrophy. But everyone has that ability to where if they see a color, they should like the color blue is like the key of G to me, you know, or the, the color key of G. G. Yes. What like does the key, key of G sound like? The key of G, um, cause I know you're musically inclined. So yeah, let me but it's, it out it's of you real quick. It's like 192 Hertz. Wow. You know, okay. that's okay. a low register. Yeah. So I know that you have this passion for the insight and the revelation that you've been given about an array of things from geometry to physics, to science. But I want to backtrack really quickly because I know most people want to hear a couple things about what you're doing with the wig while we're here. We're on set. This ain't no wig. In Atlanta. Like that. That's your hair. That's what you want to This is so This is This kind of like Richie's hair. This kind of like That's Richie's. exactly what I was thinking, right? Yeah, no, we're doing a film. Um, and I thank you guys for coming Absolutely. here to the set. Absolutely. Thank um, you for having us. Taking yeah. the time. It's um, we're it's me, it's Kevin Hart, Don Cheeto, mm -hmm. um, Sam Jackson, myself, yeah. and a number of incredible actors. But we're doing a thing called Fight Night. And it's okay. the night that Muhammad Ali fought Jerry Quarry, mm -hmm. you know, and... Um, there's a little robbery that takes place. There's a little robbery? Just a little. Who's on the robber side? Oh, uh, I don't know. Somebody with a wig Some on? bad people. Everybody got a wig on. Really? Everybody got a wig on. Them. <laughs> so what's your character's name in this movie? It's Cadillac Richie. Cadillac Richie. Yeah. Okay, Cadillac Richie. Yeah, Cadillac okay. like that. How is this different from any of your other characters you've played? Mm. I don't, I think Cadillac is a bit of a, a sociopath. Oh, wow. I've only okay. played a sociopath, I think, once in a movie called um, with Andre 3000, mm -hmm. Idlewild. All right. You see, I've watched you for a long time, Spats. And you taught me that when opportunity knocks, you said the smart man answers. Spats! Spats! See, that was some really good advice. That was the mm -hmm. closest I got to uh, okay. a, a social path, mm -hmm. you know. But Cadillac is a little more fun. Okay. okay. A little more fun. What was that preparation like, preparing? Because I've heard you say a couple of things in other interviews. And I want to ask you about that because I, I, I did some acting and studying mm -hmm. acting. And you said something I've never really heard a lot of actors say about the process of acting. And you said that sometimes when you walk off, they walk off with your clothes. Yeah. Can you explain that? Well, as an actor, as um, you're, you're more like a medium. Mm -hmm. You know, when you really get there, you you know, you go into this zone and you really divorce yourself of who you are, mm -hmm. and you just become a garment 
that something else puts on. Now, right. a lot of people sit up there and do impersonations of other folks, mm -hmm. you know, instead of allowing that spirit, you know, but I sit up and I'll pray for a little bit and go in a dark place, um, mm -hmm. go in the bathroom, turn off the lights, look in the mirror. Um, we'll have the light on at first and then after one minute, turn the light off and, you know, and search until you find, see your own glow, your own aura. And then you watch it change. Wow. And it's a scary thing yeah. because you'll feel like some hands are on you wow. and you lose a little bit of control of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you stay with it, you know, you'll, you'll be inhabited by mm -hmm. something and then you walk out and the character wow. with you and you got to know how to, to say goodbye to it. Right. If you really want to yeah. get there. Right. right? Now, yeah. A lot of people are afraid, mm -hmm. you know, to, to empty themselves and be filled up with something else mm -hmm. but you know as an actor you're an emotional prostitute wow you know you put on whatever you need for the john mm -hmm. put on you're turning a trick you're turning an emotional trick wow and it's no nothing yeah. more glorious yeah. than that okay so how do you balance the separation of who you really are or are they similar no, no, no. You, you, I mean, there's. You got to remember, we've been here since the very beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, there and there is no good or bad. Mm -hmm. It's just your perspective that you're sitting from. Is it beneficial for everyone around, okay. or is it not? There's something that has to build up, and there's something that needs to tear it down. Mm -hmm. You know, what we call the tearing of it down, we call that. We call it evil or bad, mm -hmm. but that's the process of magnetism mm -hmm. or radiation. Radiation tears apart that which was. Uh, concentrically brought together mm -hmm. through, electric, through electric potential and electric force. Electricity mm -hmm. is always seeking a higher pressure condition trying to get to the center of the apex, whereas magnetism is spinning southwestern trying to get out. And But the magnetism is necessary because unless it, it broke apart that which was connected together, you would never have any new material to rebuild again. And that's the breathing in and the breathing out of universal purpose. Now, so at the end of the day, since the Creator made all things mm -hmm. and everything came from the Creator, right. there is nothing that is bad except what you, how you are perceiving it and whether it's beneficial to everyone around you because something needs to tear things apart. And if you want to be on the building side of it, mm -hmm. then you have a sustainable relationship with the universe because the universe loves to rebuild, but it also needs to tear apart at the same time. Right, and I often say that, you know, we do live in a world of duality, so it keeps equilibrium. Mm -hmm. um, when you mention creator and universe, can you clarify who you consider the creator to be? Oh, well, I don't consider the creator to be any of the names that have been personified mm -hmm. upon it. Because if you think as above, so below, and everything in the universe mm -hmm. has an equal and opposite mate, even in our chemistry, every yeah. element has an equal and opposite mate, like the opposite mate of, of oxygen. Mm -hmm. There's a plus two and a minus two within that same octave is um, is beryllium. Okay. If oxygen is bonded with any other element, mm -hmm. the moment that it comes in contact with, with beryllium, mm -hmm. it will break that other bond wow. and immediately bond to beryllium because it's, it's equal and opposite mate. Mm -hmm. So I was like, and the, the oxygen is feminine because it's part of the expansive side, whereas the beryllium is the masculine. So there's always this balance of masculine and feminine okay. in the world that we see mm -hmm. and in everything that we do. So I was like, how can a male God produce a male son <laughs> without a feminine deity? Mm -hmm. Where does that come from? Mm -hmm. You know, and the stories of Jewish folklore, I, I appreciate, you know, the Israelites and their story, mm -hmm. but they're not part of my history. Mm -hmm. So why am I subscribing to their deities? How have that been placed upon us? Why is it that yeah. black men who are not Jewish are getting circumcised <laughs> when we are not part of mm -hmm. that Israelite place? Why are we following their gods that okay they came up with, mm -hmm. you know. So are you saying distinctively that faith and science are different or is faith and science synonymous? 
Well, science is to explain natural phenomena. Okay. The whole point of science was to explain natural phenomena, and it should coincide with what takes place in the observable universe. Mm -hmm. And that should strengthen one's faith. And that's why I said, as above, so below. So if here, everything has an equal and opposite mate mm -hmm. and is, ne is necessary in order for the proliferation of life and the continuation of, of the death cycle that is just sleeping and then you refold again and you're reborn again. And I don't, so I'm, I've always found it hard. I started off as a, as a Christian, my mother raised us as Baptist and Methodist and mm -hmm. went through those walks. But then my father went to prison and when he came out of prison, he was a Muslim. So we of course. became Muslim <laughs> yeah. until I was like 13 years old. And then there's this really cool brother named Yakub. You know, I really appreciated him. He had um, always had this, this wonderful musk sent to him and mm -hmm. ordered dashiki. And he was such a beautiful and kind person. And then one day I came home and my father and all of his friends were sitting around talking seriously. And I was like, what happened? Well, it turned out that Yakub, the gentle man, had cut the genitals off of someone, um, a wino that had urinated on the mosque. Wow. And I was like, wow. I have, I didn't have children at that time, but I mm -hmm. was like, how can a God of love right. mm -hmm. have one, you know, because some, uh, if my child urinated on my house, there's no way I would cut his genitals off. Mm -hmm. So why is it that somebody would do that thinking that right. they're honoring right. the creator? Right. And I had to start rethinking things. And then I became a Jehovah's Witness, mm -hmm. uh, went through that for around 20 years. And I began asking serious mm -hmm. questions. You know, if God had never caused it to rain until 6,000, 4,000 something years ago, had never caused it to rain on this earth. So what happened? It never rained during the times of the, of the dinosaurs. Mm -hmm when precipitation is part of the entire thing. And like it said, the Bible is supposed to be the inspired word of God. Therefore, right. if what you find one lie in there, then you have to call into question everything else that's been placed there. And I'm not sure that that is the history of the creator. Mm -hmm. And I think the creator is so much more and expansive than that. And the one thing that we all need to recognize, perfection cannot create imperfection. Mm -hmm. It cannot make any immortality or eternal cannot create something that is non-eternal. Okay. You know, and everything inside the universe is alive. Mm -hmm. And what people don't recognize is that the entire universe is the creator and we are part of that. So we are the creator within it. And when we do good, then God is good. But when we do bad, God works in mysterious ways. Mm -hmm. But we are once you recognize the divinity within you, then the universe behaves as if you have the authority. And that's why it's so important to keep your word. And what Jesus was trying to tell everybody was that you are God. Right. That's why it says God is that's it. a that's a very emphatic statement. And I don't know if a lot of people are able to handle the statement and the essence of what it was intended. But the reason I wanted you to clarify is because even when we've talked off screen, you've referenced, even with your book, you're writing, we're going to mm -hmm. talk about that. Uh, you mentioned scriptures like Daniel when you were showing me the yeah, other Daniel, so. Daniel, yeah. So when you reference those scriptures, you're not saying that they're infallible. No. You're just saying that there are other things outside that we need to consider? These are historical references within it. Like Jesus said, you know, um, we were all made in God's image, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so when you look in the mirror, do you see God? And when God looks in the mirror, does God see you? Right. That's the question. At what point? And somebody told us we were born in sin. We were all of that and that. You know, the desire to mate is a sinful thing. When a man is born with, uh, in 1970, a healthy male produced um, 1,500 sperm per heartbeat. Mm -hmm. that, is a, that is a motivating factor towards getting out there and, and 
and proliferate and spread. No, the no. Patient, in a minute. But one of the things that's interesting, we are 98.7% identical to simians or to chimpanzees okay. or to apes. What's that percentage again? 98.7% percent. Percent. identical genetically. And we're only 1.3%, there's only 1.3% differentiation between um, between us and, and the simians. Okay. But how do they live? Mm -hmm. They live in um, a harem. Mm -hmm because of producing 1,500 sperm per heartbeat so that they're, and the women, the females, recognize that that's okay. what's, so how is it that as if we're 98.7% identical mm -hmm. to them, why are we attempting to live completely isolated and not following those same rules of nature? Why are we trying to do the 1.3%? That's a serious question. Yes. And as a female, <laughs> We've had so many issues with that because it it sounds like polygamy, um, and sounds like nature. It sounds like nature. Ninety eight point seven polygamous. So, so my question to that would be, and this is something I pose to other people who are of that same thought, which is, if it is in fact how we should be cohabitating, then how do we explain STDs when you're with multiple partners? If how do we how do we reconcile that happening? It's you with, understand what I'm saying? it's within what takes like does the simians does the chimpanzees walk around with STDs? No, because they do not allow the females to go and cohabitate with other males uh -huh. outside of it stays within this mm -hmm. this community. Now the difference between us, we are not in a position to carry out the natural order of things mm -hmm. because we are not self sufficient. Right. We're not working within our own mm -hmm. our own environment mm -hmm. so we have to ascribe to a different way of life like okay. me yeah i have i have my one and i don't have a desire to okay. be with anyone else because this is not the environment mm -hmm. in which you can do that but if, okay. if it was great if the, if i had the environment that facilitated the natural course, you know, I would love to have a few other individuals helping with raising the family, okay. you know, but I, at 55, <laughs> you know, it's my too, appetite is That's a lot like, of work. You know, it's work. To, that's a lot I, of work. I can barely keep up with with my one now. Mm -hmm. and, exactly. And her sex drive, because she's 47 now, okay. has changed. <laughs> so now <laughs> she wants to play, and I'm like, listen, I was like 1,500 sperm per heartbeat years listen. ago. I'm not. I don't think I'm there anymore. That's a lot of work. That's my other thing. It's like it's too much work to deal with one woman. Okay. So but I'm just exemplify. multiple is going to be a lot of work. I'm just trying to exemplify the fact that um, I get it. That we are not living in a natural. I get it under natural conditions and we have a lot of problems associated with that. So what would you say is your foundation as a man of where all of this massive information comes from? Your thought process, the way you think, what you receive, because I hear you talking about revelation a lot, but where do you attribute that? Like where is that coming from? Because you don't think like the average person, obviously. No, because I don't identify with average. Yeah, you know, I, I don't identify mm -hmm. with that. I when I look in the mirror, I see the Creator. Okay. You know, I don't see anything short mm -hmm. of the Creator. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm. Mm -hmm. it, there's not one part of me that wasn't made from from the Creator. Mm -hmm. So there's not one part of me that's okay. not perfect. Now maybe my perception and understanding yeah. isn't there because I've, I've, I've allowed myself to be influenced by other things, mm -hmm. but I see myself in the most humble way as being directly from the Creator, and I see everyone else and everything else as being directly from the Creator, even the plastic that makes this up, mm -hmm. that carbon mm -hmm. is still vibrating at the key of E, breathing in and breathing out. We look at this and call it dead, but that browning effect, browning effect right. is 
the life mm -hmm. principle continuing on in it. So when I recognize that this is alive, it recognizes that I'm alive, and I recognize that this carries the same nature of the creator, then it recognizes that in me, and so there's an equanimity, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't see myself above a piece of tissue or below the creator himself. So mm -hmm. there's a balance of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's a, a very provoking mindset to have um, because of your extensive experience in life that most people don't get to do, you know, with acting and everything else. What would you say has been the most rewarding out of everything you've done? The most rewarding thing that's ever happened to me or that I've accomplished? In that you've just done. Yeah. Um, being able to define the entire electric field mm -hmm. or the plasmic, plasmic field mm -hmm. and patent it and the things that I discovered with that prove that the platonic solids, which our entire infrastructure is built off, were only averages and approximations, and that all of the postulates and axioms they built off of are erroneous. Mm -hmm. And being able to present that, but also being given the blessing of defining the magnetic field, the feminine side, mm -hmm. and patenting those, mm -hmm. the expanding expansion or the unfolding of the yeah. universe. But then having, being given the opportunity to define the neutral that sits between it or the constitution, which is the linchpin mm -hmm. that uh, mitigates between the micro, which is the electric world, and the macro, which is the magnetic world. And this works as a bridge, a common factor between. So having discovered and patented the wow. um, uni grand unified field equation yeah. and putting it into practice and building all of these new um, industries that have come from it, from transcendental lighting to tangential flight mm -hmm. um, to in supersymmetrical systems. I've patented four supersymmetrical systems. Wow. And a supersymmetrical system is it always aligns. That's how the universe behaves. And according to science, there are no supersymmetrical right. systems yeah. because the platonic solids have a thing called discrete symmetry. And for everybody out there, the, I was just about the to say platonic we solids were um, five poly polygons that mm -hmm. um, have that are based upon straight lines and flat place flat mm -hmm. planes, um, and there are the uh, tetrahedron, the hexahedron or the cube, the octahedron, mm -hmm. um, the dodecahedron, and the icosahedron. Mm -hmm. Now, for millennia, since the days of Pythagoras uh, and the days of Plato, these were the undisputed, mm -hmm. you know, fundamentals of God. And they said that they pulled it out of the flower of life. Mm -hmm. Now, my biggest question. Well, another thing based on what's my greatest accomplishment right, right. would have been to question a mathematical fallacy mm -hmm. that one times one equals yes. one. <laughs> because how could an action times an action not have a reaction? Okay. You know, because every action has a natural reaction. So I was like, how did they come up with this mm -hmm. um, irrational and an illogical set of things. If, if to multiply means to make more, then how can one times one equaling one be part of a multiplication table? It fails to satisfy the term multiply. So questioning that and in the, in the first, second, third grade, mm -hmm. as I came along, mm -hmm. uh, that, cur that courage towards curiosity mm -hmm. and an unbridled passion towards finding the truth, which Therefore, the Bible or any other book has to be held. You have to question it and make sure that everything that it says and purports to be is what it is. Because as a Jehovah's Witness, when I was a Jehovah's Witness, if my child would have been sick and needed blood, I would have, wouldn't have given him blood because right. of Genesis 9, 4, about not putting blood in your body. Mm -hmm. And then, but out there, we were told as witnesses, you got to stay away from astrology, stay away from astrology. And I'm like, why stay away from astrology? Why do I need, because they told the truth about Christmas, told the truth about Easter, told the truth about holidays, all of this stuff. But uh, why stay away from astrology? Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out all religion has come from astrology and the astrology was astronomy. 
and they were trying to make sense of the heavens and how time passed and these these bodies and it turns out the sun going through the 12 constellations they anthropomorphized those 12 constellations and they became mm -hmm. disciples mm -hmm. and there's every story every culture from the egyptians mm -hmm. you know to the greeks they had the same story of mm -hmm. the son of god that born from a virgin mm -hmm. that's betrayed by one of the disciples he dies on the 21st and in 3 days he late he rises later well well they say that but you know we i mean you know i've I consider myself, I call myself a believer, but I, I am under the umbrella of Christian. And there are a lot of erroneous doctrines that are in Christendom that don't, you know, purport what God actually has given us to examine. How do you kill your, how do you burn somebody for eternity for <laughs> something that they did for 30, 40 years without direction? It lacks it lacks justice and it lacks the thing we call love there's nothing my child could do that would make me burn them forever and then we got to think about god never breaks his laws of universal function in order to perform a miracle mm -hmm. that's not what happens so i guess the person's flesh revolt grows back and they burn the next day grows back that sounds like something from science fiction Mm -hmm. You know, all of those things that if me, the best thing you could do for a child that's out of control, if you can't get them help is put them to sleep mm -hmm. so that they can't harm anybody else. But you would never continually torture somebody for something that forever, for something that they did for a few years. You would never do it. It lacks equanimity. And the universe is based upon balance. So when I asked all of those questions, mm -hmm. I never got the proper answer, so I had to go in search of, because I would have put my life and my family's life on the line for mm -hmm. that. And I missed the days when I looked forward to um, a savior coming in and helping us. Mm -hmm. I missed those days because it was, was much easier, mm -hmm. but I recognized that we have to save ourselves. You have to be your own hero and act. Jesus didn't sit and wait for some uh, someone else to come and help. He got out and did what was necessary in order to educate and edify the people that he cared about. And as a result of that work, we have all of these wonderful ideas, you know, but now we've lost that spirit and it's time for us to get back into the spirit of what's right. Well, I, I appreciate, you know, your thought process concerning that. And I think there is a way to reconcile the two. Um, I wouldn't dare tell a person how they need to personally receive truth, mm -hmm. you know, um, but you taking such a strong stance in your convictions and your revelation towards science, towards questioning what you, the word you use is audit. Mm -hmm. You're audit. auditing all of these systems. You know, you're auditing the system of religion. You're auditing the system of science and math and the system of education, the system of this government structure. So in that process, you don't need, um, to know whether you're right or not. But the world is questioning. Well, I need to know that I'm right. right. You know I, I mean? need to know whether, because the truth does not matter being examined. Mm -hmm. It's just the lie that doesn't like being examined. Okay. You're not supposed to ask those things, but the truth always welcomes thorough examination, mm -hmm. you know, rigor. Mm -hmm. That's what we're supposed to, that's what our math was supposed to do. So how do you have where the square root of two when you cube it, has mm -hmm. the same value as the square root of two when you multiply it by two. Mm -hmm. That's like making x cubed equal to 2x, which is equal to x plus x. That's an unnatural equation. Mm -hmm. So that means the math is off. Mm -hmm. How can you multiply by zero, but you can't divide by it without it becoming an infinity when division is, an, is the inverse operation of multiplication? That's how you check your multiplication is you divide it back. So if you can't divide it back, then it's yeah. unreal. And, you know, in, this, in the scriptures, Jesus didn't mind being questioned. No. <laughs> so why would the why would the Bible or the people that profess Pushing. promote the mm -hmm. Bible? Why would they question or be upset with someone questioning 
whether these traditions are actually from the creator. And if they're from yeah. the creator, you'll know. So for me, it, it was important to find the truth. That's mm -hmm. all I care about. Mm -hmm. I care about the truth and make way for life mm -hmm. because everything, I don't, whoever said that, I think it was a narcissist that said, well, God put us here and put all the animals underneath us, says who? Mm -hmm. Why? We're the only species that is responsible for other species being extinct. We've mm -hmm. caused millions, if not mm -hmm. billions of species to go extinct from microbes to actual uh, mammals. We are responsible. So you think we are in charge of God put us here over this earth in this way to abuse it in this life? There's a, um, you've probably heard it, I'm sure, but there's a scripture in Isaiah and it says that the heart of man is yes. desperately Wicked. And treacherous. And who can know it? Who can um, know it? And I think those are some of the explicit things that explain our humanity. I like to say a lot of times that we're just very savage in, in our nature. And so when things happen to me, um, what I look at is I look at humanity. I don't blame God no. for what we choose to do. And I think that those are some of the imbalances of understanding truth about God's word and who he is and what his plan is for us and why we're here. Um, but again, you auditing the, the lie. I'm auditing you know with me. I'm auditing, auditing the, the indoctrination and the dogma. Got it. You know, yeah. yeah. You that what that scripture says is um, the heart of man who can know it. It's it's desperate Desperate. and treacherous. Yeah. Now, treacherous means to trip one up from behind. Mm -hmm. That's the heart of man. And you think that we've been given authority or dominion over the earth? That sounds like something that somebody wanted to enslave people, mm -hmm. you know, because they use those same things to, um, yeah. to okay. say that slavery <laughs> was okay, you know, yeah. for all of this time, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you have to audit the, the political systems. We have to sure. audit for seven years, six years. My family went through um, a, a federal criminal investigation for mm. the IRS. Mm. Six years mm. thorough, went through everything mm. for six years. At the end of the six years, they came up with, well, you know, we keep this going or you can, you can um, plead guilty to a misdemeanor of fraud. Now I knew what they wanted me to right. do was so that they could say he's a fraud mm -hmm. and therefore all of these other things that I would come out and say, they would be able to say, well, I was like, no, let's go to court. Let's do this in front of a jury of my peers. Mm -hmm. And then they walked away from it. And then uh, Pennsylvania, um, somebody that was really had a big appetite, <laughs> they went and took it made a civil thing mm -hmm. and so i went and i responded to the person on the phone mm -hmm. and told her no what you guys are doing is wrong because anyone it taxes from 2008 2009 even 2011 by nature would be discharged mm -hmm. for any other citizen so how is it you're going to try and hold me accountable mm -hmm. for something you would have discharged that's discrimination mm -hmm. we know that the irs is an illegal entity um we know that. Yes, it's Most a private entity. It's not even part of the yeah. government. Yeah. So again, I said this to you the other night and we didn't have it on camera, but I'm gonna say it now. <laughs> you know, you're you're stirring up some stuff. Just the truth. And right. But in that, and we know all the greats, you know, we talked about that the other night, you know, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, and all the people that stood against something or stood for something were attacked in a certain way. And we talked about fear and how that plays out. So do you fear anything with what you're auditing now and how people will respond to all of these truths that you're seeking to prove? Oh, uh, no, I've already proven it. Okay. The 97 patents mm -hmm. prove it. You don't get a patent unless okay. it's real. And then the inventions and the new industry mm -hmm. prove it. The entire AR, VR world that you guys use with mm -hmm. with all of that came from my one of my first patents, the World of Windows patent mm -hmm. in 2009, that when I was 
accused of domestic violence and mm -hmm. was unable to go and get my mail because I couldn't go to the house because she had a restraining order, couldn't reach out in any way. So for a 500-something dollar um, maintenance fee, mm -hmm. my World of Windows patent was abandoned and immediately Hewlett Packard stamped everybody, AT&T, grabbed my patent, didn't just cite it, but built their entire ARVR world. Wow off of it so I'll is that was that. that is that what that was about because i did read where there was a domestic violence dispute and, and mm -hmm. my first wife was given my, a restraining order yeah no that my first wife that was the only woman that i've ever had a uh, physical alteration okay. with interaction with mm -hmm. you know i i had spent because of trying to be a witness oh but first let me get to you had asked, and am I afraid? The only thing I'm afraid of is not accomplishing that which I was put on here to do. Because if I don't accomplish it, I got to come back and do it again. Mm -hmm. It's what we need right now is the world to be saved and okay. and and our and to raise the vibration of humanity. And the only way you do that is remove the interfering um, vibratory things, which is lies, mm -hmm. and replace it with truth and and everyone becoming one. So part of those lies, my first wife, who I did, and this is what I did with Rolling Stone, who I had, we had broken up and were apart for six years. And for I did the biblical thing. I went there, took out the trash, still <laughs> did still cut the lawn for six mm -hmm. years. That I took care of everything. But I was being humiliated by her. And at one point it got to me. And yeah. I went to the door and, you know, she had, been really mean and I and I kicked open the door mm -hmm. and I grabbed her mm -hmm. you know and then my kids were right there mm -hmm. and when I smacked her when I said I smacked mm -hmm. her it was like it was, she was I was like hey hey like mm -hmm. that but for some reason now my brother came and mm -hmm. you know grabbed her because we were working at the house mm -hmm. and um when the police came I told him what happened you know they took her to the station took us to the station they dead pictures and all of that. And when I was so surprised when she said that, when I read that she said that I'd hit her with a closed fist. Now, mind you, mm -hmm. I weighed about 220. I was benching like 340 mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. If I had punched her in the face, mm -hmm. her face would, there would have been bruises or any of that. But anybody can look up, you know, Lori McComas yeah. or whatever name they got for mm -hmm. and look at those pictures mm -hmm. and see that that didn't align, but mm -hmm. I believe that it was her attorney and her desire not to have me there in order to get the restraining order. They did that, and then she didn't want to, she didn't know how it would affect me right. going into the future, and that's what my second wife used as blackmail, okay. knowing that I had already had that there in, in our industry. There's two terrible, unforgivable sins, mm -hmm. domestic violence and um, child abuse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. those two things, mm -hmm. you're done. So I was given the scarlet letter and mm -hmm. I didn't know that that scarlet letter was the best thing for me because I was kicked out of the limelight mm -hmm. and forced to be back inside of my own home. Mm -hmm. And that's when the creator began to to use me again okay. and I started remembering all of the things that mattered when I was a child and that's where all of the patents came from. Mm -hmm. That's where the discoveries came from. It was during that time that I was on my own. And mm -hmm. I Do you feel that you've been forgiven? Oh, I don't need to be forgiven. I was gonna ask I didn't do shit to be forgiven. Want to be forgiven. No. No, I forgave me for losing the self control. But my okay. kids knew the truth. My, okay. you know, I did a video um, explaining about my, the mm -hmm. my second wife mm -hmm. who, all I wanted from her, mm -hmm. my second wife Michelle. Mm -hmm. We got engaged. I didn't. We didn't sleep together until we, you know, we were engaged. Met her in two thousand nine. Yeah, 2008, and we got engaged in 2009, mm -hmm. tried to sleep together and realized we didn't have any chemistry at what? all. And That's crazy. And But when I still brought her home in Philadelphia, and I was like, here, um, I, I played for the tape of my mom right before she died. My mm -hmm. mom um, died from colon cancer in 2008, mm -hmm. and I had one dictaphone 
that had my mother the last two weeks, you know, and her telling me, I knew you were going to be all right, and I loved you, and da-da-da. And she's like, oh, why you got an addictive phone? Let me put it in the computer. I can put it in the computer, and we keep you up. Okay, great. I'm downstairs. Two hours later, I come upstairs. All of my dictaphones. Now, mind you, I've been, I'd heard that Louis Armstrong had recorded his life. Mm -hmm. So I always had dictaphones recording my life for the last 10 years before meeting her. Mm -hmm. She had downloaded all those into her computer. And a couple of them was me having phones that stuff like that. Because I didn't know if some chick was going to come out you and meet what was okay. going to happen. I so I came up and I saw that up there and I was like, wait, no, 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 that's my personal stuff. She and I didn't know much about the, I didn't right. play with the computer that much. So she was like, oh, no problem, I'll delete it. And she hit delete and I was like, okay, fine. So I go downstairs and fine. And then three months later, when I tell her, look, I don't think this is gonna work out. She's like, you think I, 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 I erased that stuff? I kept it and I heard who you are and got it. And that's where the blackmail okay. began. But I didn't care about the blackmail. All I wanted back from her. Mm -hmm. was my mother's tape. Wow. And I begged her and went through all of that stuff for years, just mm -hmm. hoping she would give that back to me. Mm -hmm. After destroying my career, all of the stuff that she went out and did, not one time, not one, not one call to the police, not one report from the police, not one report from a neighbor, not one trip to the hospital, none of those things. All she came out and said that I had hit her and had that painted a black eye on, and people ran with it. Yeah, I ran and, it. And when she finally gave me back the tapes after mm -hmm. I paid her the ransom for it, she had erased everything, so she killed my mother again. Wow. And wow. I still had to continue paying someone and I was looking for the courts to help and all of those things. And, but the good thing is I, I forgot that 50% of me is genetically predisposed to become my mommy. So all I had to do is look down at my hand. Oh, there's my mommy right there. And I shouldn't have never been afraid. Wow. So being afraid is a terrible, terrible thing. Yeah. But every, nothing happens by accident. Because if that hadn't happened, I would have continued making money. I wouldn't have cared about the truth. I wouldn't have cared about where we are. I wouldn't have cared about the IRS. The IRS led me to the idea of what in the hell are we paying taxes? If my family was forced to come over here kidnapped, mm -hmm. brutalized, forced labor, mm -hmm. raped, Mm -hmm. murder. But under all of that, we built this entire country. Now, mm -hmm. if I'm a contractor, I build a home for you. Right. You can't pay for the home. What happens? That home comes to me by default. Exactly. Yeah. So by default, the entire United States, all of its infrastructure, all of its capital buildings, mm -hmm. everything that's been, the streets were built by us. They have never paid us for it. Mm -hmm. Now, the Brattle Group, which is an independent statistics group, they did an evaluation of um, what Barbados um, and their relationship with England, with Britain owes Barbados, mm -hmm. said it was $4.5 trillion for the 350,000 slaves that were brought over. It's $4.5 trillion. But for the U.S., they said it was 108 to $131 trillion mm -hmm. that was owed to the descendants of slaves mm -hmm. that the reparation should go. Now, they don't have that. They can't even get that in twenty in fifteen years mm -hmm. from the GDP. Our GDP we get maybe about ten trillion mm -hmm. at the most. Right now there's twenty trillion dollars in total money mm -hmm. available, mm -hmm. but we owe thirty-four trillion dollars. Okay. So we're paying six hundred and eighty billion dollars a year in interest mm -hmm. just on that money that will never be paid off because there's never enough money printed in order to pay it off. How so I know you have a very uh, illustrious reparations plan. Yes. You mentioned that the other night as well. And that is one of the questions I wanted to ask. Well, let's do it. What that plan is. But I think it's important for the people to understand where we are as a nation in terms of the numbers. Because you mentioned, you asked me a question, like how many do I yeah. think is here how many what population yeah, what percentage population. of the population do we make and I said up? 50 million yeah 
and it, it turns out probably more like 100. Right? It should be. Yeah. It feels like we make up a third of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, we fill up 90 percent of the prisons. Mm -hmm. We have so much legislation regarding the mm -hmm. descendants of slaves, mm -hmm. but we only they say we only make up 12 to 13 percent of the population. Now, does that make sense to y'all? Does that make sense to anyone? It says that no. Caucasians make up 75 percent of the population here. But the point of that, if that's the case, we only contribute 12 percent to the GDP of the IRS. Now, it's immoral for them to be charging us taxes, I think, for the next 400 years. Because they don't have the money to pay us the reparations, the 131 trillion mm -hmm. that we are owed, I think the only possible solution is no taxes for any descendant of slaves for the next 400 years. Now the black community, which I hate using that term black, right. and I hate using the term African, yeah. and I'll explain that in a second, but mm -hmm. our community will now become an opportunity zone that every community can now invest in and reap the benefits. And mm -hmm. we have a precedent for it because every single city or state in our union has some kind of film credit or tax exemption or tax rebate yeah. 20, 30, 40 percent because they know they're going to get a thousand percent return based on the amount of innovation that comes in. So if you allow the, the descendants of slaves community to mm -hmm. become an opportunity zone, then everyone will grow and benefit. Yeah. We, we get rid of the karmic debt that we have mm -hmm. here, but also we, we inspire um, innovation mm -hmm. and all of those things. And it costs them nothing but 12 percent. So in that plan, because there's a there's a thought that is proliferating throughout our community that we're not unified mm -hmm. and that we don't stick together and we don't spend our money in our own communities. So we spend what one point five trillion dollars annually in every in every else. other community other than our own. So if we get the reparations or if we receive tax free, are we gonna steal? you know, support those other groups as opposed to ourselves. And if that's the case, who is the person? Because I mentioned this the other night, like we don't have a voice like yours. Um, we don't have a voice like Malcolm X now that people will follow. So how do we rally that community together? I'm saying that in the place of black or African, I'm saying that community. Well, I'll, I'll, let me, let me, I'll backtrack so that okay. they understand why I don't want to use black right. or African. Mm -hmm. You know, black, according to the dictionary, means dark and ugly and death and all of those things. And if we keep about, keep in line with Dr. Emoto's work, a, a revolutionary scientist that King that realized that water is alive, it has memory and the crystallization, if you say love to it and then you, you freeze it, it has these beautiful crystals, but mm -hmm. if you say hate and put all that on it, it has these malformed crystallizations. Mm -hmm. So lot, water is affected by what we say and where so much of our body is made up of water. So every time we say something, it can affect it, whether it's negative or positive. Well, the term African, that wasn't the original name of the continent. Mm -hmm. That Africa means, the A in Africa in Latin means sunny. Mm -hmm. The Frica is Greek. It means horror. Oh, wow. Sunny horror. Mm -hmm. Sunny horror. Mm -hmm. Sunny horror, sunny horror, sunny horror, sunny horror. Mm -hmm. The real name of the continent as spoken by 2,000 tribes and live there is Alkebulon. Okay. And it meant the birthplace of life. Okay. So as an Alkebulon American, that Alkebulon community, mm -hmm. once they recognize, once we come together, because that's all it takes. We all sign a petition using the same Instagram, X, <laughs> whatever, Twitter, whatever you need to do, mm -hmm. we do a petition and we'll see how many black people, are, how many Alkebulin people are actually here. Okay. Now, for, for people that are watching that may not be as astute as you are in terms of researching, how can they fact check? YouTube. Okay. <laughs> YouTube, the original okay. name of Africa. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all you got to know. Okay. It's right okay. there. Yeah. It is. 
Right. Like we want them to be able to, you know, be self-sufficient in their learning process and in the process of hearing information that's new because we know this cognitive dissonance um, keeps people from hearing truth or even hearing something that's coming from a place that they've never heard before. So even with the mathematics, one times one is not mm -hmm. one, it's two. Yeah, and see what I had to do, what they didn't know when I first came out and talked about the, mm -hmm. the number system, they didn't know that I had already discovered that in the calculator. Mm -hmm. They didn't know that I had already built had discovered um, four super symmetrical systems based off of one times one equaling two. Mm -hmm. When one times one equaling one does not, that their entire system is based off of that. So they didn't know that I had already patented it mm -hmm. and it had already been proven out. So that's what you have to do first. You gotta make sure you take care of your foundation and then you build up off of yeah. it. Yeah. So I took care of that, but we will come together just by talking about this if everyone is talking about this and demanding it they've given it to the germany is still paying reparations yeah. to those oh, that were yeah. in the holocaust well the, the governor i think it's the governor of new york i saw where they have released 183 million i believe to holocaust survivors in new york fascinating right and it's interesting that they have not yet still even wanted to have the conversation surrounding reparations, but it gives me pause because I'm always wondering why don't you even want to have the conversation? Um, and I and I know it's a it's a subject that most people don't want to talk about, most people don't want to hear. Um, most times it's oh just get over it, mm -hmm. you know, get over it already. And I think that's very insulting. That's um, extremely that it's dismissive to think that we don't we're not owed not just conversation, but reparations itself. The IRS calls it a frivolous argument, hmm. a frivolous argument mm -hmm. to demand that which was given to the Native Americans, mm -hmm. to demand that which was given to the Japanese Americans that was in the internment mm -hmm. camps, to demand that which was given to every other right. group of people that's been harmed. Right. It's a frivolous argument because they know they didn't have the money for doing there. Some governors are them, oh, let's give them all a million dollars a piece. No, give me a hundred and thirty one trillion dollars. And if you can't do that, no taxes for the next 400, make it five, six hundred years, because you've got to add on the penalties that would have come with all of that. I have another proposal. Go ahead. <laughs> So in the Bible, there's a verse, I think it's in Proverbs, where it says, when a thief has been found, that they are to not only return what has been taken, but also seven times more. Mm -hmm. So it's owed, and I mean, I'm not a math magician like you are, so somebody do the math <laughs> well, um, of be. what is actually owed from what has been stolen from our ancestors. Um, and even us, you know, still being here, so it, it, again, it's, they, it's now that they don't, they don't have the money to do right. it. Not, okay. The money has never been printed and never will be printed enough okay. in order to cover that. That's why I'm like, okay, well, let's have a win-win. You lose 12% of your, your GDP to the IRS. You gain a thousand fold, a thousand percent mm -hmm. of innovation as a result. And you have the karmic debt lifted. Mm -hmm. And I think every single country that has participated in that, it would bring such an ease to the world. Mm -hmm. It's a simple, simple and reasonable thing. Now, if they're not willing to respond to a petition, then we file a class action lawsuit. Mm -hmm. And all it takes is two of us really? to file a law class action lawsuit okay. against the United States government for crimes against humanity okay. and demand that back. But if everyone comes together and do that. And by everyone that's inclusive of not just, what is it, Nebulin? Huh? Nebulin? Al Kebulin. Al Kebulin. Not just Al Kebulin people, but Yes, but, it, all but people. if all of us come together and right. demand yeah. it, like the Native Americans mm -hmm. demanded it, mm -hmm. and it was given to them, mm -hmm. and they suffered more than we did, they lost their entire country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They lost everything. Yeah, I don't. My grandmother was Cherokee, so uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's those are big components, and yeah, if I'm the only one out there saying it, yeah, you can come and try and hurt me. Mm -hmm. But if everyone is participating in this, because everyone are will stand a benefit, I think when they when young men 
and women see one man stand up and they see another woman and man come and grab two of them, then it's a then there's an opportunity for growth mm -hmm. because they know, hey, yeah, you may be able to hurt one of us, but you can't hurt all of us. Right. And you can't hurt me until the creator says that my work is done. Right. And when my work is done, then I'm open to whatever happened. It could be a microbial that takes me out, but nothing is going to harm mm -hmm. me as long as I'm doing the work of the creator and, and moving our people together just towards truth. That's all I want is absolute truth right. and transparency. So when you talk about work, how do you categorize the work that you've done on the acting side? It's, it's, yeah. I, it's, it's so different. It's so vastly different. Let me just say that. Yeah, like I, I said, recognize that just in talking to you and, and doing the research on all of your other interviews and what you've done already, and we're definitely going to get into that. But how do you how do you categorize the two? Well, you you compartmentalize it because of its the very nature that it exists. Like I said before, and I've used this illustration, so I'm going to be keep the consistent messaging. Can you imagine if Jesus showed up every day at five thirty? Okay, yeah, y'all, at 6 o'clock, I'm going to walk on the water. You yeah, know, pay the money because I'm going to walk on water. Mm -hmm. And he did that every day. Mm -hmm. Me as an actor is literally, I consider it as Jesus walking on water for tips. Wow. It's, it's, yeah. It's I'm, effortless. Yeah, people say, okay, yeah, you're an actor. You, why don't you keep acting? Why don't you keep acting? Because I have an entire generation that needs this truth. Mm-hmm an entire generation that needs to understand the truth about what's taking place within the universe. Because we are, I'll, I'll take you guys on another walk. In 1970, they did an um, uh, uh, examination of the human body. Uh, like I said, the average male produced 1,500 sperm per heartbeat. Mm -hmm. They redid that same test in 2020 the average male produced 10 to 15 million sperm. Mm -hmm. That's a 2.64% reduction by year. Mm -hmm. So if you follow that out, by the year 2045, there will be no males left on this planet able to produce sperm. Why? Because of a thing called bisphenol, hard plastics, BPAs or BPHs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or thylates. P-H-T-H-Y-L-A-T-E-S, a nasty word. Mm -hmm. But what it does, because they didn't know what to do with the products from the refinery, so they started mm -hmm. putting it in polyester mm -hmm. and all of these clothes. But as a result, what, what that plastic does and those fine particles does in our body, mm -hmm. our body sees you know, the carbon, estrogen has is, is made from carbon. Testosterone has carbon carbon attributes to it. So the adrenal receptors are going around throughout the body. You know, everything okay, everything is okay. And if it's not okay, then the male's body produces testosterone and it fills those receptors. And if it's not okay for the woman, the female's body, her ovaries produces estrogen and they go and their, their body is now in balance. But because of the thylates, what it does, it mimics the estrogen. It mimics the testosterone inside those adrenal receptors. And so now the testes Starts don't produce. Producing. And so men become effeminized. There's, is that what's going that's, on? There's a guy named Dr. Tyrone. <laughs> Own that <laughs> funny name, but he did a test with the with the with frogs, mm -hmm. and the frogs became homosexual. Mm -hmm. The females become masculinized, mm -hmm. and the males become feminized. Mm -hmm. And it's something that's a terrible thing that's taking place. And that's what I like um, about the honorable minister. He's constantly been talking about maintain your man card you don't trade that in but take care of your body and know what you are putting in it so stop drinking plastics because by 2045 there will be no males left on this planet not wow. just within the human speech the human um, platform of life mm -hmm. we're talking about because the the plastics is, are in the oceans everywhere. So yeah. no, so you're talking about an extinction level event for everything mm -hmm. in in what less than 26 years. Wow. 
26 That's years if we don't turn around. But what's interesting, if you stop drinking plastic today, within three months, your, your, um, your testosterone levels come back, your estrogen levels come really? back, if you remove the plastic from it, unless your mother drank, plas drank from plastic while you were in utero, because now there's this thing called the ADG, the um, anus to the anus to genital gap, that for a woman is supposed to be twice as far between, um, it should be twice as, between a male and a female. But now the, the young I call man, it the, the GG. Yeah, well now the young okay. man, you can't distinguish the, the distance between the two and so you can't reverse that. You can't reverse that. Okay, so you end up being born with micro penises and you know all of these things, and you can't reverse that. But for us of that original age, that you know we have a chance to fix, and most people can fix it if you mm -hmm. take the plastics out. But they don't want you to do that because they need people to pass away. They want so, because I, and again we talked about food earlier, but I. I've been vegan for like 27 years, but lately when I was saying earlier before we started rolling, I don't even like eating because so much of the food is GMO or plastic. So I drink out of glass bottles if I can find them. That's all I hard. drink. That's all I drink is. I'm not going to give them a plug right now because they're not paying me. So no. I'm not going to mention the name of the brand I use, but glass bottles is what I drink out of. And I've been doing that for, oh my God, I don't know how long. And most people look at it like, oh, you think you're better? It's like, no, I don't want to drink plastic. And I'm going to tell you a true story. I was cooking grits one day and I was using, this was years ago. What's grits? Yellow grits. <laughs> Just, I'm not going to tell you the brand. <laughs> Just grits. Um, and I was putting some, I'm not going to use the brand. It was a brand that comes in this container. It's brown and tan, got black writing on it. Everybody uses it, especially in the South. Yes. So I put the butter in there. It took forever to melt. And that's when I was like, something is wrong with this food. It's, it's gotta be plastic because it wouldn't melt. Mm -hmm. It would, I mean, I stirred it and stirred it and stirred it and it just would not melt. And I'm like, this is not right. There's no way that this hot, cause y'all know hot grits. Yeah. We know what hot grits can mm -hmm. do. Al Green would Hello? Tell you that. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> It wouldn't melt. So I'm like, okay, plastics in the butter, plastics in the food, even the salmon. I was eating salmon at one point, and they're saying now that the that the actual real salmon, the modified salmon is eating the real salmon. So you can't even get wild caught salmon. No. Because of all the genetically modified things that are going on. And so many people don't know these We are things. facing extinction. So when people yes. say, hey, Terrence, why don't you keep acting? Keep acting. No, I'm trying to keep us alive right now. Go back to the work. Um, because I did see where you were coming. You said you want to retire and then you came back. Yeah. So what was that transition like? And why did you decide to come back? Even if it's for a brief moment. Well, no, it's because finances. You have to. The moment that you know you go through the six-year criminal tax investigation. Yeah. You know, spend three, four million dollars defending yourself, and then because it's just paying money to lawyers, mm -hmm. and so that their whole thing is to bleed you out. Right. Now, a fascinating thing. Um, it would be two points. Um, I had an issue with Fox. And CA at Fox and and Disney mm -hmm. because the image that you see for Hustle and Flood for for Empire that okay. profile mm -hmm. that came from a steel shot on on from Hustle and Flow mm -hmm. they took that flipped it and put it on everything made a trademark of it sold it around the wow. world didn't ask my permission are you serious wow it's that wow. image is worth a hundred million dollars at least for how much money that they made from it. Mm. We got a forensic photographer, um, mm. photographer person wow. to go and find the actual frame. We took that to jams because we were forced into arbitration with jams. Mm. You get, you're not allowed to use the court system. Mm. You have to go into forced arbitration with jams and even seeing it, and knowing that the arbitrator said, yeah, this definitely came from Hustle and Flow. Okay. But um, Fox and Disney have broad rights. What? They have broad rights 
It's like, huh? Wow. Based on what? My writer clearly says you can only use it in character. You can only take pictures from something that is in character. Mm -hmm. How are you able to take something from an entirely other movie? And wow. then they, Fox lost all of its records of how it came up with the image. I was about to say how they keep it. <laughs> Every email concerning their logo, they lost all of that. And we get to the arbitration and that's not concealment. What? That's not, so I'm like, okay, well, all right. And then the arbitrator started saying that we asked for um, uh, rights of publicity. No, we couldn't do that. Rights of publicity, you only got two years to do that. And they had concealed, the entire time told me that it was from, um, it was a composite of me and another actor, mm -hmm. which meant that it wasn't something for me. So they lied, did all of that stuff. We prove all of that in court. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, the arbitrator had, made some erroneous statements inside of things. So we go to the appellate court and I'm like, okay, okay you know what I'm gonna do? We get the appeals for the under jams. Mm -hmm. We go there and I, I'm like, okay, I don't wanna get, uh, I don't wanna get any superior court judges. I wanna get federal court, federal judges mm -hmm. because they were appointed and they didn't have to go through the process of maybe having to do favors and all that to get their stuff. The federal, those federal judges, they said, well, um, instead of coming down and saying, okay, well, what the arbitrator did was a mistake. Maybe it was a little over, maybe he had a Joe Biden moment. You know what? <laughs> maybe, maybe it was that. I don't know. Instead of them doing that, they cleared, they said, well, the character, the producers had the character in mind when they took the picture and therefore it's in character. What? They doubled down on that lie. And to this day, this happened two months ago, three months ago, they have not entered that into the Superior Court. I'm like, enter it into the Superior Court because the first thing we're going to do is take it to SAG. Okay. And SAG is going to now be forced to adjudicate or deal with it yeah. because this makes their rights of publicity or any right they have to an actor mm -hmm. Null and void, because they can wow. steal any picture from wow. your baby photo. The moment you wow. sign that, hey, hey, um, you have the right to use my image. They can now go to anything and conceal it from you. And if you find out about it, they don't have to tell you about it. They don't have to pay you for it. Even they put it on merchandise because they can cut to this precedent. And I'm like, do it. So that's like oh, enter that's... it, enter it into the thing. And on top of it, picture this. Now that so that's money that should have been in my life. Mm -hmm. Now CAA. That's a lot of money that should have been. Well, involved, let's sir. let's go to another one. I'm just saying. CAA, Creative Artists Agency, they represented me. Mm -hmm. They also represented some of the people from Big Bang Theory. Mm -hmm. They also did the deal with Fox. Mm -hmm. My show was with Fox. The people from Big Bang was with Fox. Mm -hmm. We had 28 million viewers. They had 11 million viewers. Yeah. They were getting two million dollars damn near $3 million an episode, those white kids that had no name recognition, no Oscar nominations, none of that. We have 28 million viewers, and these these jokers are paying me um, $325,000 an episode. And I'm like, every year, ask. every year I'm asking my agents, what's going on, what's going on? I didn't know that the packaging deal, my agents were incentivized to keep my pay low, so, they ne so they'll go to Fox and say no and they'll say no themselves because they were producers they owe me over 120 million dollars based on what would have been what paid have to been. white yeah. counterparts yeah. so now i'm in the process of suing them mm -hmm. about it and they when i asked them about it about my money they sent me a check for 666 dollars si wait 666 dollars to say wait Six hundred and sixty-six dollars exactly. What? Not saying where it's from. So I was like, "Oh, you y'all trying to y'all trying to threaten me? This Look, is a this, piece, no, this is a threat. This is a Market threat right, right here. here. And y'all wow. think y'all think I'm That's scared? Insulting. You think I'm gonna be quiet about this? Because I wonder what you're doing to every other black yeah. artist." Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, how do you of... how do you negotiate two million dollars for a, for a white cat? and negotiate 325,000 for a black cat that has three times what the white cat is getting. They were getting $750,000 
um, for a 30 minute spot, 30 second spot what? for advertisement. That's that's what you get for bigger sometimes than the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And they were getting that every week wow. from us, but they were incentivized. And that's why packaging deals were mm. illegal. But now I'm waiting to go to court now to deal with CAA concerning that stuff. And they're like, oh, don't you want to work in a business? No, I want my money so I don't have to work. That's the whole point of working. I wanted to retire so I can do what I got to do. Oh so, my God. Yeah, this, so this is this is important this to is know. This going on, yeah. yeah. Because, you know, I mean, you know, I know you've heard. I had to get back on the stroll. That uh, everyone, yeah, don't get you know. Me started. I know, I know. Don't get me started. I, I got to ask you about that too, though. No, 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 no. So... I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go the acting route. Okay. If you were um, to choose a wife from any of the characters that you played opposite of, which one would it be? Hmm. <laughs> I have never. I haven't had too many wives. And, um, you want me to give you some examples? Um. Yeah. Give me some. Throw some. Out. So like Hustle and Flow or Empire. No, Taraji would she's be. A, she wouldn't be on it. She wouldn't. Okay, no. so she would. That's just not my nature. My, my the last nature. series you did with the Best Man Holidays. No. No. Okay. no. Trying to think of a good one. Um. I would choose not to have a wife. Okay, that might be. If, 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 <laughs> because there's so much work that I have to do, okay. and you know, like the Temptation said. You know, yes, you've got to shower a woman. A woman needs constant we attention. Do. They need constant, and it's. We were made that way. I know, and it's. We were made that way. It's hard to give all of the attention that a woman needs mm -hmm. when you have to take care of okay. trying to educate or lift up mm -hmm. an entire nation, an entire mm -hmm. um, generation. So, this is a good. This is a. This is good. Because as women, we're always taxed as being emotional creatures. I think we're both emotional, men and women. Mm -hmm. I just think men are, is called ego and women is emotion. Um, I, I've never thought about that. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. I think it would they're be both, true. They, yeah, because men are, I think they're very emotional. Um, same tear ducts that women. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just not expressed in the same manner. It's not acceptable. And as and right, and as frequently as we do. Um, and because of yes, we were raised differently. Women were raised to be in the kitchen, to be cooking. I mean, by the time we nurturing. could walk, yeah, we have bottles in our mouths and we have little plate vacuum cleaners and, you know, dishes to cook and clean with and pots and pans and Consistent babies. Messages. It's constant programming from the time we were born. So when I encounter a man that says, oh, you're so emotional, you're this, you're that, it's like, this is who I was cre created and formed to be, is a wife. So it's like, all I know is how to take care of you, how to get up in the morning and cook and do all these things. And then I'm told, oh, you're too emotional. It's like, so how do, how do we reconcile that? But you guys grow up playing in the streets, Football, mm -hmm. playing with fellas, you know what I mean? Boys are made out. of snakes and snails and puppy dog tails. <laughs> Again, exactly. Africa, Africa. Right. Or right. women are told girls are made of, of, of sugar and spice and everything. everything nice. Nice. So that yeah. kind of messaging. Mm -hmm. And the trauma that a young man feels immediately when he's born yeah. is the most sensitive part of his, of, of his being, yeah. having that snipped. Mm -hmm. to say, hey, welcome into the world. All mm -hmm. of those things have massive wow. effects upon how we come about. But you were, you had asked a question. You had said something. I didn't, I, I had a joke no. about that moment myself. I know. <laughs> we were talking about the work and what made you transition from retirement to then. And then we went into yeah. Yeah, I had to. Why you had to retire. I had to. I had to because I still have to take care of my family. I still mm -hmm. have all of these industries. I have to get Lynchpin mm -hmm. fully launched into the world because literally the first country that gets 10 million Lynchpins will rule the world because there's nothing else that stops. Yeah. It. Do you feel as though your message and your mission now with Lynchpin, with the out of the math, mathematical errors that are going on, do you feel like that message is being received? Oh, it is. 
Okay. People are hearing it. Some there was a video that just that I didn't even put together that mm -hmm. um, was put together that yeah within a, within three days we were at 1.2 million views on yeah. it. I watched it go f um, from nine o'clock in the morning to till no, but from seven o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. to nine o'clock in the morning two days ago went from nine hundred thousand to one point two million, and then it just stopped mm -hmm. out of nowhere. Did it just stop out of nowhere? Or are they afraid that it's being spread out there because mm -hmm. I was saying the truth about everything? You know, it's it's being received because yeah. people got their calculators. It's being received because the thing about geometry, like somebody can have an equation. And they can confuse a lot of people with an equation. They can confuse a lot of people with a long lecture. Mm -hmm. But geometry is its own proof. Symmetry, supersymmetry is its own proof. The eyes look at, well, it looks right. That in itself, you can't argue with. Mm -hmm. For years when I was talking about the one times one equaling two, the world attacked. And they attacked so vigorously and, mm -hmm. and viciously about mm -hmm. it. And they didn't know. Yeah. I waited. Mm -hmm. I waited until they would meet till the hook was all the way down in their intestines. <laughs> then I pulled out it with the calculator. Then I okay. tugged at it some more mm -hmm. with the patents. Then I tugged at it some more with inventing, you know, making fixed wing aircraft obsolete mm -hmm. and tugged a little more by inventing tangential flight. Tangential flight. I got that word. <laughs> you, she, Listen, she was saying tan, 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 transgender trans flight. Transgender flight. That sounds like a flight from Atlanta. Transgential. I was like, transgenital. Like, what is that word? But I got it now. It's you got tan it. Tangential. Gentle. Meaning to go off on a tangent or spin around, it. fly around mm -hmm. your own center of mass. Mm -hmm. Something they've never been able to accomplish with only six props. But wow. we don't just have tangential flight. We have unlimited midair bonding. Mm -hmm. We've also defined, um, patented an entirely new, set, new propulsion system mm -hmm. um, that makes yeah, the cartridges and um, all of the other projectile systems that they have obsolete. Mm -hmm. The U.S. government doesn't have what I have. The U.S. The, there's no government in the world that has what I have because all of their stuff is based off of off of uh, obsolete fundamentals. Because we've now proven that the platonic solids are averages, and I literally would welcome anybody out there, mm -hmm. university, physicists. Theorists, chemists, I would love to have a head-to-head -head duel, mm -hmm. and let's let's put this out there and, and examine the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, at the end of the day, if you're right, I'll walk away. You can take the patents, yep. but if I'm right, you mm -hmm. hand me your accreditation. Absolutely. You hand me your PhD. You don't deserve it anymore. Uh oh, that's huge. I'm down for it. Let's yeah. play. Yeah. Let's play okay. because the truth don't lie. Yeah. Yeah. That's huge. The truth don't lie. That, uh, that's Neil a huge deGrasse statement. Tyson, who mm -hmm. I initially sent my treatment to, 36 pages, mm -hmm. came back, sent all these red lined it and mm -hmm. these disparaging, you know, kind of very, very was rough. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, let's get together. Let's have a talk. Let's let's debate and see if what you say is true. Let and then you put your accreditation up. I put my patent up, and we'll see who has the truth and who's a liar. Wow. Because I saw the interview you did at Oxford, mm -hmm. um, and we had this conversation the other night. You yeah. and Dre, and I got to give Dre a shout out for bridging this situation between us, being able to sit here. Um, I've I've known him for so long. But yeah. he's the reason why we're here. Um, and I appreciate him being able to be a, a facilitator. voice, <laughs> you know, for me um, and, and somebody that, you know, it. we need these people, you know, like you need people to get your message out there. We need people that are always willing to go before you that believe in what you're doing. Um, and I, I, I think I told you the other night, like I, I saw, I told Dre this, um, I think two weeks before you even called me, I saw a video you did, the one at Oxford. And when I heard you talking about this, <clears throat> excuse me, I was like, number one, I had no idea that your mind was like it is, as I'm sure a lot of people don't, because we do have a tendency to only see people one dimensionally, you know, in terms of what you do as an actor, mm -hmm. you know, we, we see Q, 
Yeah. One of my favorite is characters. Quentin. Quentin. Quentin Spivey. Spivey. Listen. Quentin Spivey. That is my dude. Okay. I He's will always see rascal. him. He is. So <laughs> we tend to only rascal. see that. Okay. <laughs> like he is the reason why, you know, we fell in love with who Terrence Howard is, you know. And so all of your work that you embody is, you know, so necessary. And I want to I want to say thank you for being used, you know, because you've impacted a lot of people. But on this side, you've impacted us even more because now you're challenging us to hear something that we've never even considered. I took physics in high school. I barely got out of there with a B something. Because it's also BS. Because it was like, whoo. It's BS. So to hear you talk about, and I mean, I had geometry and all that, and I aced math. I had like 106 grade mm. average in math, algebra, algebra two. I didn't do calculus and trig. But to hear you talk about math, one times one uh, never made sense to me. And so as a child, and I think I told you this too the other night, I always wonder, like, how do we know that? So I could not disprove it, though. Oh, yeah, it was just a, a natural curiosity. Calculator. Right? I put it in the calculator. Okay. And I was like, let me just walk. It took me, I was in Africa, I was in Alcabula mm -hmm. <laughs> in Johannesburg um, shooting uh, Winnie and Nelson, Winnie and Nelson. And two o'clock in the morning, I just finished doing an interview on the radio, and I'm just sitting there playing with the calculator. And the angel said, hey, why don't you put square root two in there? Mm. And just cube it, see what mm -hmm. happens. And then I did it times two, mm -hmm. and then I added it to itself. And I was like, how oh, is these the same number? I was like, am I, did somebody slip me something? I know I had I had a little tequila at the bar, but okay. did, I was like, is this real? And then so I kept putting this psycho in here where I mm -hmm. put the square root of two, cubed it, divided by two, mm -hmm. you know, cubed it again, divided by two, it kept coming back to the same number. And I did it 216 times. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this is a loop. I found the 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 place in the matrix where it doesn't right. fit together. It Oops. was a glitch. Oops. <laughs> Oops. You shouldn't have let me. You shouldn't have told me that. Okay. And then I was like, okay, well, the same way that the same spirit had led me to every other, you know, discovery, mm -hmm. because I was willing. It's just about being willing to be used. Mm -hmm. And the creator will use you. Mm -hmm. You can't be afraid of it. Mm -hmm. And you can't be afraid of the consequences mm -hmm. of it. You have to embrace it. And what I'm hoping is that the young men and women that, that's out there, they recognize mm -hmm. and see the potential of change just by standing up and doing what's right and refusing to lay down. and. That only comes when you know your purpose yeah. and your position and you are unwilling to compromise mm -hmm. that because you're asking me to compromise divinity and yeah. the divine yeah. does not bow. No. Mm -hmm. And if they move with it, then we have a sustainable future because what I've discovered in the grand unified field equation mm -hmm. with discovering the proton defining the proton mm -hmm. and doing all these things. You've got to remember, this is the geometry of hydrogen itself. 99% of the universe is made up of hydrogen. Mm -hmm. So if we have the template for hydrogen, we have the template for reality and all the things that come with it. And that means life and death. So we can extend this existence. We can wow. heal the diseases. We can heal, we can live till time indefinite, mm -hmm. not through praying and God fill you us back what, up and all of that. Because we need the Lord to fill us up. Because the truth is, there's, <laughs> you're going to float off into some spirit realm and do what? You know, that's not what happens. Every element, tra you know, goes through the transition and comes out the other side. It'll, you'll take, um, <laughs> all right, I'll do it. I know, because I was we'll like, do, I know you're about to in, go in the so carbon just... octave. In the carbon <laughs> octave, you've uh -huh. got um, you get you start with your helium, and mm -hmm. the car and the neon is on the other side. Okay. Because really, every uh, there's only seven elements, seven tones mm -hmm. for the most part, because all of the elements occur between the pressure conditions of two noble gases squeezing on each other. So in the carbon octave, where they squeeze themselves all the way up, you start with lithium, 
beryllium, boron, then you have carbon, which is a plus and minus four, mm -hmm. you know, it's both male and female because mm -hmm. you're getting hit from both sides. It has a double tone. Then it goes to um, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. Mm -hmm. Fluorine, you go, now it goes through the noble gas. Now fluorine comes out and now it is sodium. A fem right. It goes from feminine to masculine. So when you breathe in, in, breathing in is a masculine thing, a charging of the system, mm -hmm. you know, as Walter mm -hmm. Russell said. Mm -hmm. Breathing out is a feminine expanding of a system, a discharging of the system. You, through each, you never breathe in twice without breathing out once. So how can you go from, we know this isn't our first lifetime here. We've all felt that we've been here forever. We, can you remember not existing? Right. Do you remember not being? No. But do you think you've been a woman in every lifetime? That wouldn't be fair. But it would make sense if you're masculine male in this lifetime, the next life you become feminine. Mm -hmm. You're a woman. Mm -hmm. Come back to male. Breathing in, breathing out. That equanimity will allow for karma to take place. Whatever I've done to women in this life you gets done to me in the next one. Whatever women have done to men in this life gets... <laughs> and what happens it That's biologically... Interesting. That's interesting, though. What happens biologically? Mm -hmm. You know, the male's body stops producing the testosterone, produces more estrogen, <clears throat> start growing boobs, become, you know, become less aggressive and more understanding. The woman, what is she doing? She's slowly coming up to being more masculine, mm -hmm. start actually growing little beards mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. She's that the prostate, which is the same exact tissue that is in the uterus. When the testosterone wow. level drops, yeah. guess what? The estrogen level rises, the prostate, what does the uterus do every month? It sheds, it grows and it sheds. Mm -hmm. So what happens to the prostate? It starts trying to swell. Because it's being influenced by the estrogen. The testes wow. go back up and become ovaries. The ovaries drop down on and become testes. Mm -hmm. It's just a cycle of going, breathing in, breathing out. Mm -hmm. Universal breath. And understanding that it, it brings us back <clears throat> to a balance. So I'm like, if, yeah, you want a transgender? Just wait in a couple years in the next you're life. Good. You're going to be exactly what you want. I can't. You're going to get there. Fulfill your role that you're here. Fulfill the role that you were placed here to fulfill. Do that job, get it done, and you move to the next one with the blessing of universal purpose. Mm -hmm. You know? That's so compelling. It's compelling on so many levels. Um, because, again, you are defying systems that have been set up and built and in place for so long, like hundreds, thousands of years that this information has just been recycled over and over and over from generation to generation. And yes, been indoctrinated and definitely been inundated with so much information. So to dismantle all of those things, um, I, I, I feel as though I've always been a person that's been you know, pretty open to hearing. Um, but again, cognitive dissonance will not allow some people because it'll evade their ability to just be open and receive something that they've never heard or something they may even know is true. You you pose a very compelling question about can you remember your existence from yes. the beginning till now? And, you know, that's compelling. Um, I think there's so much to know that we will spend the rest of our lives learning. There's just too much information to receive. And I, I believe you're one of the persons that have been gifted to hear things that no one else has heard well, or considered, um, or if they have, we haven't been exposed to them. So whatever your sphere of influence is that you've been granted, now ears are opening to hear that because some people may not ever hear from a Terrence, Deshaun, Howard. Um, but then you have people on the other side of the world that may be having these same conversations. We, we may not ever know that. Um, but I do think that the work that you're doing is impe impeccable. I think that the work that you're doing is necessary. And I believe we're on the precipice of a paradigm shift. And it started years and years ago, but where we are now, especially post pandemic, Mm -hmm. If we don't think that things are able to change, all we got to do is go back and see what happened in 2020, because everything that we know has shifted and it will not go back 
to what we consider to be normalcy. And so with your introduction of where you are now, because I heard you say you've been working on this, what, 45 years? Longer. For Longer than for, for a lifetime. For a lifetime. For a lifetime. I, I heard you say in another interview that from the time you were a child, you've been questioning things. And because of something your mother wanted out of you is why you aspired to do acting. Yeah, no, my mother didn't want it out of me. She loved my little brother so much because he was okay. really handsome. He looked like her father and she okay. lost her father when she was like eight, mm -hmm. nine years old. So my younger brother, Antonio, she loved him so much and she wanted him to become an actor and mm -hmm. all of that stuff. And I thought if I became an actor, I would get my mother's affection and have her love and that's why that tape was so important because my mother on her deathbed was like terry i always knew you were going to be all right mm -hmm. but i was so close to tony because he had asthma and your father was kind of didn't wasn't you know that mm -hmm. that understanding mm -hmm. to him at the time i was just protecting him mm -hmm. that's why it was so important to have it but mm -hmm. yeah i realized that i never really wanted to be uh, an emotional whore i didn't i did it thinking I would get my mother's love, which I already had, mm -hmm. you know, and now, you know, it pays the bills. Yeah. It keeps my family taken care of, and it has given me this platform mm -hmm. so that I can disseminate this truth mm -hmm. and I can question this stuff from, from this place. Mm -hmm. But my desire is just for all of us to come together yeah. and tear down the lie, you yeah. know, bulldoze, all of these institutions mm -hmm. that proliferate that lie and and embrace the truth and the reality and take care of this planet mm -hmm. make way for life mm -hmm. and anybody that wants to know about these things that i'm talking about i wrote a, i wrote a book gave it out for free mm -hmm. um one times one equals two but it's go to tcotlc.com tango charlie oscar tango libra charlie.com okay. and you can download the book for free okay. anytime you see a green clover tap on it i have supplemental information to help you guide and build mm -hmm. apps so you can help be able to understand this truth. Mm -hmm. And if you want to understand a lot much broader picture of where a lot of the science understanding came from, look up Victor Schauberger, who dealt with water and the fluid dynamics associated. Look up John Keeley, who in, 19, in 1870, in 1870s built the first perpetual motor. Mm -hmm. um, or look up Walter Russell, mm -hmm. the universal one. Mm -hmm. You go there. If I if I passed away, if if all the books were taken away from from everybody, and there was only one book I would could take into the future in order to build a new society off of it, I would take my book mm -hmm. or ask that because in this book I I prove that the Platonic solids are averages, and I re I show them the wave conjugations that replace mm -hmm. them and show them the proper way to 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 utilize universal function mm -hmm. and to be able to maximize with it. But Walter Russell's book, The Universal One, mm -hmm. will give you a consciousness and an understanding okay. that will change everything. And if you're not ready for that, just get the um, <laughs> new concept of the universe by Walter Russell. He did this in 1926 and redefined the periodic table based on tones. Mm -hmm. Because you said something earlier about sounds, like colors have sounds. Every Well, remember, sound wave has the same dance that a light wave has. Mm -hmm. It's just the sound, one is longer and one is shorter. Mm -hmm. If you want to know the color of a particular sound, you f take its, its frequency and you keep doubling it until you get into the visual spectrum. Wow. And then you'll have the color. If you want to know what a color sounds like, you keep dividing it by two until you get into the audible, audible section. And then you'll understand it and draw the correlations between those things. So for a novice who is totally like listening to you and it's like wah, 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 because it's just unfathomable to try and ingest so much. What would you suggest if they were even fairly inquisitive that they research in order to even understand you because some people are going to have to go and, and pull out go to, the, go to my book go to my book tcotlc.com mm -hmm. it's right there 
Okay. It's right there. And it was, I wrote the book, basically my commonsensical mind was having a conversation with my educated mind because I went to school for chemical engineering for only a year mm -hmm. and it was like, oh, this is a BS. Mm -hmm. Then we get up out of here and went and did something else. And now 97 patents later, 97 patents, trademarks, and registers. You have 97? Patents, trademarks, and, um, and copyrights. Wow. wow. You know, about 60 of them is for new technology mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because I knew it was necessary based on Walter Russo had discovered uh, the f three elements that that follow hydrogen but precede helium and he watched as everyone's you know because he didn't have the accreditation that everyone came and stole and watch people go up and connect Nobel Prizes on behalf of him, mm -hmm. on, be, on the work that he did. So I knew, okay, let me patent this, mm -hmm. let me wait till the patents are granted before I go and talk about mm -hmm. any of these things. So that's what got really my tough work, okay. excuse my language. Yeah. It's the fact that you can't disprove what I've done, and if mm -hmm. you say something about it, you're just going to spread it more. You hurt me, you're going to spread it more because the book is free and the entire world infrastructure mm -hmm. could collapse as a result of what I have because the universities that are rooted in this dogma and this mathematical fallacy, they lose all of their authority at that moment. Would you consider yourself to be chosen? Everyone is chosen. Even in acting, even in you know your craft, what you do. Um, because everyone doesn't perform at the level that you do and that you have as an actor. No, I don't consider myself different or, or chosen because you got to think, if we go back to in 1970, if a, in a healthy ejaculation, it was anywhere from 250 to 500 million sperm that was sent into my body. <clears throat> the first 100 million, 50 million died in the ass and got caught in the phones. Mm -hmm. In order for, it's con comparable to a 24-hour blind man marathon trying to go from here to the moon. And you don't have any instruction on how to build a rocket or any of that stuff. And when you get to the moon, mm -hmm. you got to crash your head into it and bury yourself into it. Mm -hmm. But in order to get to life, I had to rent, win a half billion man race mm -hmm. against a half billion of my own brothers and sisters. Blind marathon, not even knowing where I had to go, but I trusted my instinct and I got there. For a woman, it's a 72 hour to even 128 hour blind marathon because the female sperm can live up to three to, to seven days now in comparison to the male sperm that only lives for 24 hours. So any of us that get to life, mm -hmm. We've already won a half billion man race. If you won, ran a half billion man race, blind marathon a day, and you won that blind marathon, you'll be on the cover of every magazine, every cereal box, every, you'll be, there'll be states and countries named after you. Mm -hmm. But that's what every person did in order to get here. Mm -hmm. But when we get here, we stop running. We stop chasing. We stop recognizing that as above, so below. If I had to run this race to get here, then now I've got to continue this race. I just continued running. That's the only difference. I was not afraid to question. And that made a huge difference. And it's just trust that you are already a winner. You're already made in God's image, so you yeah. have that divinity, you know? Mm -hmm. Just put, put on your wings and fly. So for every person out here listening and watching who sees you and hears everything you're saying, but they still desire to get into the field of acting, what would you say to them? Do what you got to do <laughs> if that's what you want to do. But mm -hmm. one of the things that one of the, the problems that we had, um, a lot of young women and men come out to LA, LA or, or New York or they go to um, Singapore or Hong Kong mm -hmm. or, or some major city and they try and become actors and they've saved up for about six months mm -hmm. and they try and do all of that and then after six months they don't have it and they start borrowing money. Then after mm -hmm. about another three months they get in a desperate place where they're about to be evicted and so they what happens they go and try to answer some modeling ad or some casting mm -hmm. turns out it's porn they end up in the yeah. porn business because wow. they're too embarrassed to come back so what wow. my one did my uh, mira 
um, we developed a, an app called Holly, which is democratizing the yeah. entertainment industry okay. to where you can stay home and keep your day job, you stay in school and still come and audition at the end of the day oh, wow. and put it up on Holly, okay. you know, and handle okay. casting. And now you don't have anyone out there. You don't have to lose your day job. You don't have to quit school. You don't have to stop being a doctor or a contractor. Okay. You can do all of those things and still build mm -hmm. your thing. So if you want to really be successful, go to myholly.app. Okay. Right now we're in the beta testing. We'll and that's your app because I that's didn't see that. Our, that's our okay. app. Uh, okay. And we want to bring a community of, of mm -hmm. artists together okay. to where we don't need SAG anymore. We don't need the agents. We don't need the managers. Mm -hmm. Get rid of all the middlemen. And now we support each other. That's awesome. And grow as a, as a system. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's what I would tell somebody to do. Okay. Work within the community. Mm -hmm. So you had a birthday Monday. Yes, I did. How you feel? I'm double nickels now. I mean, double nickels. I have a gift uh, before we wrap. A chainsaw? Uh, yeah, because you got to cut, you got to cut this system up. <laughs> you got to cut this system up. No, um, but I want to be uh, one of the first people to award you in your work. So I have an award for you. Oh my Lord. That I'm going to present to you as another birthday gift and just as an incentive to keep going. Not that you need that. Um, I can't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. I can't stop. I can't stop. Yeah. Okay, here we go. All right, I'll read it to you. Let's present this to you. Dear right. Lord. And it says, Legacy Award, Terrence D. Howard. It says, for your brilliance, bravery, and tenacity to illuminate and challenge history and the systems of this world. From Straight Talk, Dad Newman. This is my award to you for the work you've already started and to encourage you to keep going. Thank you. You're welcome. Welcome. Wow. Yeah. I don't even know what to say. I couldn't give you a Nobel Peace Prize, but no. this is the closest I could get to it. No, they are. Yeah. Well, it has begun. Yep. Well, and I, I just would like to say prophetically that I decree and declare that this will not be the last of your recognition for the work that you've put in and for the sufferings that you've endured throughout your life. And I know your mother is proud. Yes. Yeah. That's a good time. It is. Stop what you're doing and turn up your radio.